Sandy Monroe is going to be here to talk about the newly unveiled Chevy Silverado EV and if it is really better than the Ford F-150 Lightning. And we did this interview face to face. So let's get going right now. Welcome to E4 Electric. If you want to see more of Sandy on this channel, which usually happens pretty much every week now, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. So Sandy and I once again had the chance to meet in person, this time in Las Vegas, Nevada for CES. And of course, we had to sit down and film a couple of videos for you guys. This is the first one of the two, and I will air the other one in the next couple of weeks. Now, as you probably know, I personally thought that the Silverado EV is a much better electric truck than the Ford F-150 Lightning, and I have outlined why in my Sunday video, but let's see if Sandy agrees or disagrees. Both happens all the time on this channel and that's why I love having him on. Oh and one more thing, you've probably noticed that I still sound a little bit weird but during the CES week my voice was pretty much completely gone. So if you're wondering who's dubbing my voice, well it's just me. So before we get to the interview though, a quick reminder that this video is brought to you by Too Simple, an autonomous trucking technology company that recently made history by becoming the first to complete fully autonomous tests in a semi-truck on 80 miles of US open public roads without a human in the vehicle and zero human intervention. For more information, check out the link in the description of this video. All right, Sandy, um, glad to once again see you in person here in Vegas. Yeah. Um, I wish I brought my voice, but maybe next time. Um, the Let's talk about what we both seen here. Uh, well, actually, let's start with something we didn't see, which was the unveiling of the Silverado. Uh, electric Silverado. Um, now I know you like F-150 Lightning uh, a yeah, lot. Uh, a lot of people do. Yes. Um, now that we know what Silverado is all about, how do you think it compares? It doesn't. It's more expensive um, and it's got less features and I think that Ford is going to have a giant winner. I really do. Um, and uh, I think the Silverado is going to come in a uh, sad second. But, or actually, not even second. There's other ones that I, I think are better than that, too. Well, do tell. Rivian will probably be, be a better product, and certainly Cybertruck will be. Uh, well, I partially agree with you, but what about the range, right? Um, the range is substantially longer, 400 miles to 300 miles yeah. of F-150. Yeah. It does play a big role, especially when you're hauling stuff, right? Right. Um, do you think that gives it an advantage, uh, at least for some people? Okay, so um, I, I used to do work where I actually needed a pickup truck. And I, I can't remember the time that I needed to travel uh, 300 miles to get to the job site. In fact, I, I don't even remember 50 or 40 miles. The big thing that I think that uh, is going to be happening with the Lightning is it's so prepared for the, uh, for the marketplace. And it's sold into, I don't know... 2037 or some, something ridiculous. I, I mean, they're way, they, they've got them sold for way out there. Whereas the Silverado doesn't have all those features that I would be looking for. And by the way, when you add, even though you may not be, you know, um, using the power um, and all the time, um, having all those accessories, those accessory power outlets on the Lightning uh, does mean that you're going to you know, it, it will deplete uh, the battery um, uh, just because they're there. Um, it's it's an it's an inefficient it's an inefficiency that that you just got to live with. And as far as uh, you know, making things so that they've got uh, a bigger battery or more range. Okay, I crawled. I we haven't had a chance to really do any detail work on the Lightning, but I crawled underneath. There's plenty of room. Uh, if I wanted to make a bigger battery case uh, and fill her up, I could. I, I know I could do that. That that wouldn't hurt me. In fact, um, <clears throat> I didn't get a chance to see the car, but Jake Deep from uh, One, um, our next energy, um, he's here. He's actually over at the Wind next door, and um, and he just went uh, 750 miles on a trip. Uh, and he said that um, he was uh, he was passing cars heading into the gas station and whatnot on the uh, on I seventy five heading north to the uh, basically to the upper peninsula and back. 
and they didn't they didn't stop at all period so his battery pack fits perfectly inside of the tesla uh, plaid tesla plaid does not have a battery pack as uh, with as much power as what he put in if ford wanted something that could give it more range or give it more power or whatever longer uh, uh more durability whatever okay fine um phone up jag deep and he'll uh he'll or sorry not jag deep um uh, majeep yeah well so at, uh, one silverado's battery is almost 70 kilowatt hour bigger than uh, ford's n550 and yeah. it gets about 25 percent well 33 percent more range um what is that going to tell you a little bit about whether or not they did a good job with uh with the battery uh if if it's if it's just uh we got a bigger battery than you yeah 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 that 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 could be correct um it also could be that it's more efficient but again i only have seen what came from the folks at general motors i haven't seen it myself and um, as you know i believe everybody um right up until i finish the tear down uh then uh, i'll tell you what i think and, but before that Right now, I'm only looking at marketing brochures. And, um, and normally when I see a marketing brochure from Ford or General Motors or BMW or anybody, um, they always exaggerate in their favor. The only, the only guy that doesn't do that is Elon Musk. He always underestimates or understates what, uh, what, what the Tesla's gonna do. And he likes people to be surprised, I guess, I don't know. Yeah. I think some people would disagree with that sometimes, well, right? I mean, we're I still waiting for the semi and the well, roadster. Well, that's and... fine. Th those are those are projections that he, he did from a timing standpoint. I think he gets excited about that. But we found that we were getting much more range out of the S than uh, the, the the Plaid, the model the Model S Plaid, than uh, than we were expecting. Um, and the charging time was less as well. Um, so. I don't know. It depends, I guess, on what the date is, what Elon wants to say. But uh, but in general, what we found is that if he says X, it's going to be probably X plus uh, as far as a benefit for you, for the customer. All right. Now, one of the things that I thought, besides the range that Silverado one opt F-150 Lightning, uh, was the uh, charging rate, top charging rate at 350 kilowatts versus yeah. 150. That's a pretty big difference. It's yeah. important for people to charge it very quickly. Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Charging rates, I think, are all going to go up. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was talking to uh, Vistion about about uh, the stuff that they're working on, and um, they were talking about 800 volts and um, 1,100 amps, which just totally stopped my heart. Anyway, that's what they're working on now. My guess is that... Um, uh, in a very short period of time, we're going to be looking at uh, a lot more juice that can be shoved into the batteries, which will make the job of charging uh, a lot faster, a lot easier and faster. Now, we've played this game before. Uh, if you were in charge of GM and you want to make the Silverado as good as F-150 uh, Lightning, uh, what would you do? Well, it's too late really to do much of anything because the, the product's got to be in the marketplace. And the last thing General Motors should be doing is trying to think about, hey, should we add this or that or change this or change? Um, this has got to be into the marketplace quickly. The Silverado, as you may know, is, uh, is in uh, third place. It used to be the number, well, it was a number two seller for a long time, uh, but now it's Ford Ram and then now Silverado. Um, they've lost a lot of um, they've lost a lot of loyalty, something because the, the car is or the truck is um, it's it's an old fashioned style truck. It's a very rough riding and things like that. Um, if I had one thing to suggest to them, I'd, I'd suggest that hey, maybe what you want to do is have a look at the Ram and see what you can do about uh, as a running change or maybe as an option and running change, put in a air suspension system like what the Rams got because quite frankly, the, uh, the Silverado rides a Lego like a buckboard. Now, when you put the batteries in, they'll have to change the suspension anyway because you've got the extra weight. Maybe they already thought of that, I don't know. I never really uh, 
General Motors doesn't reach out to me very often. I don't know why. I wonder, I, who, who knows? Why? Yeah, so yeah. maybe they've lost my number. <laughs> yeah, probably, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Trust me, they're not calling my number very often either. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. at the end of the day, um, I found out from, uh, uh, like we just, uh, we just had our PR people fire us because, uh, because they said, well, PR is, uh, you know, we can't do a good job because of your YouTube channel. Can you ditch the YouTube channel? No. Well, and we're out. Okay, fine. And that's the way it Wait, goes. Wait, GM but people asked No, you? no, my PR people. I oh, had a PR oh. company and they basically fired me. Um, I think that once you get into the uh, YouTube kind of uh, scenario, uh, you're going to lose a lot of friends. Um, I think that that's what... That's why I don't get called from Bloomberg anymore. That's why the Financial Times doesn't want to talk to me anymore. On and on and on. They look at us as a competition or something. It's not true. I don't have the same viewers and stuff like that as what they do. But but who's going to... I'm not going to argue with them. Same thing is true with General Motors. Um, they look at us as um, you and I and everybody else that's out there as, uh, I don't know, Tesla fanatics or, um, you know, going to do nothing but give us a hard time and things like that. So, I don't I, care. I doubt anybody looks at me as a Tesla fanatic, but I'll, I'll, I'll at this point, it's, it's, well, it's been a... <laughs> it, it is what it is. I mean, they, they just think, most of these guys think that um, unless you're, uh, unless, unless they pay you to say things, nice things about them, then you're not, you know, you're not a friend. Mm -hmm. So... Well, uh, okay, so <clears throat> back to Silverado, I, I um, you know, you mentioned that it's not even number two really anymore and it's too late to kind of change whatever they got going on. Yeah. Um, they've also announced Equinox for $30,000. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, it's, they've delivered 26 electric vehicles in Q4 of, you know, last year. Yeah. Uh, is it maybe a little premature for them to throw yet another EV out there when they're not making much right now? Well, at the end of the day, um, they, you know, the president of the United States came out and said they're leading the pack. I've heard that. Uh, have you? Yeah, uh, yeah. And that, uh, that's, that's gotten some press. Mary and, led, I yeah. think is the hashtag, yeah. Yeah, so anyway, when you, when you look at things like that, if you're in if you're in the marketing um, arena and marketing and sales, and uh, the president comes out and says that you're leading the world, or sorry, leading North America in uh, you know, in EVs, uh, that's a, that's a very tall statement, and you really don't have any market share. You got to do something. So um, there's the lost leader that that comes out. So okay, we take the Equinox. We push them out. We put them out at thirty thousand and hope somebody will buy them. Are you making any money? Hell no. We're losing money left, right, and center. But um, look, I'm not going to make the president look stupid. Either president, not Mary Barra or Biden. So, I mean, that's what they're that's what they're going to do, uh, and that's that's all they're going to do. I, they they have no other choice. They have they have to do something. I mean, um, this is like when. <laughs> you know, somebody comes along and, and says, uh, oh, we're going to do this. And then somebody else in the company says, well, we can't do that. Well, what do they do? Well, they go into over, overdrive and try and figure out how they can put something out. So having something like a $30,000 Equinox that no one will ever see, they won't even build one. <clears throat> they'll say, they'll have a, okay, you're going to get the plain Jane Equinox and it'll cost you $30,000. They have uh, cloth seats, and there will only be two front seats, and on, on, you know, whatever you can do to decontent it. People will look at it and say, well, I don't want that car. Oh, well, we can add some options. And the next thing you know, you're looking at a $45,000 car, and suddenly, you know, they make money, and uh, they can still say that they've got a plain Jane out there for thirty grand. So let's talk about other things that did make it to the actual floor. All right, I'm going to stop right here and air the second part where we went into the rest of the CES and what happened with the rest of the electric car unveilings and events. I will air it next week. And by the way, if you're wondering what was up with the whole public access TV show setup, well, it was so loud everywhere in Vegas that the only place we could find where it was quiet enough 
was the hotel room. By the way, don't forget to subscribe to Sandy's channel. If you haven't already, I put a link to it in the description of this video. All right, looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged. Take it